nonprofits, let's raise more money. For this episode, Matt Ashley joins us as he shares incredible stories of organizations defying the odds and explores proven strategies to amplify your fundraising efforts, regardless of your organization's scale. Let's get right into it. So, you know, Matt, we were talking about some smaller, what I would say is, you know, we have a lot of people, they say, well, you know, we're not in a big place. We don't have a big gala. We're kind of a rural community. Rural, yeah. You know, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll pe- pull people in from all over the county. It's not going to be some black tie thing. So we're really not sure, you know, but we, we want to do something besides having a spaghetti dinner and a pie auction. And and I think that's a really good, you know, it's a good point because, you know, sometimes whenever you got the $10 dinner, you know, the $10 dinner spaghetti dinner thing, and you're, you know, selling off, you know, a few pies that people brought in, you're trying to take, and I, now I've seen some pie auctions where the pies brought $5,000. I'm not suggesting (laughs) if you've got that kind of a pie auction, keep doing it. But you know, where they're trying to move that up. So why don't you share some of the things that you did? Because I know you dealt with that a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had events all over in very small communities. and In Montana, yeah. In Montana, context, yeah, in yeah. So not a whole lot of industry in Montana and definitely lots of small right. communities. I right. would say, I guess, kind of thinking back, you have to start by making your event a, a place or, you know, experience people want to go to. So yeah. having really high quality merchandise in your event, being well organized, having a good timeline. And really, if you want to get people, you know, you want to grow your event, maybe you've had one and it's not as big as you'd like it to be, or maybe you're considering having one and it's, you know, you're d- deciding if it's worth your time in that community. I think if you approach it, I know you guys had a webinar that focused on sponsor tables. Those are those are a real critical thing. And this could, those kind of go back to, you know, something that's a, a bigger, I guess, key item is attracting the people that are can support you have the capacity mm-hmm. to support you. even in those small communities there are you know there are those individuals in, in those towns that that are able to support you and it's kind of getting yourself organized your committee your team organized to you know attract those people to your event that, that have the capacity to support you and your organization and, and like you preach jason is being well equipped to share your mission why to come to this event you know what it's going to accomplish and you'd be surprised the funds you can raise in those small communities if you're organized and you attract those business owners, doctors, businesses, yep. them to bring their clients and, and treat it as you know a stewardship event for them or a, a really a marketing event for them to bring their customers or bring potential clients or network with the community. And even in those small communities, those dollars can add up significantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The There's opportunity there. Yeah. You said something, Matt, you said, you know, make sure you, you run it like it's a big event. It may not be that have the same thing. And I think maybe a lot of people have this fear. My experience is, is that it doesn't matter what, what the size of the community is. People still want to show up and see and be seen. For Women sure. still want to get duded up and put, put on, you know, buy a new dress for it and go get their hair done and, yeah. you know, yeah. get their makeup on. Because if you live on the farm, you don't have a whole lot of opportunities for that. And maybe you got to style it diamonds and denim kind of thing, or, you yeah. know, boots and ball gowns kind of thing yeah but i think what you said is do something that is not going to be expected mm-hmm. and you know the church social or the county fair Pan- st- i mean Pancake you know, breakfast you know the hinton rodeo dance was big yeah, you yeah. know it's this is something different and i think that you're gonna yeah. you're looking to draw a different crowd i'm not say a different but a different mindset yeah yeah, I for, I'm going to interrupt you, Mac, before you even answer. For some weird reason, the two things that I heard, you know, are gravitated towards from what you're just laying out was be creative and mm-hmm. be disciplined for simultaneously. Sure. You know what I mean? Like have have high creativity, make it an event that folks want to come to, but be disciplined and, like you said, treat it like it is a big event because that's what you want to grow into. So why not lay the foundation now? So I, see, I just feel like a, a healthy dichotomy of creativity and discipline, right? Having everything dialed. Yeah. No well, did you find that to be true? What I was talking about, as far as you know, people wanting to get out, be seen, dressing up, doing the doing that kind of very stuff. Much so. and, and yeah, very much so. And it goes back to kind of your marketing. You want to let people know the event early, you know, when it is, get it on their radar, hit them multiple times, so it becomes oh. kind of a, you want to position yourself as this is the event of the year in the small community to come yeah. to, you know, no matter what your organization's mission is, you want to make it the the place to be. And what we saw is. Some of our smaller events across the state that I worked in, those were the events that some people enjoyed the most. Mm-hmm. We had events as large as, you know, over 750 people. And we'd have individuals from those communities that would search out our smaller events that were, you know, 100, 150, 200 person events, you know, or less mm-hmm. than 100. They would travel to come to those events. So if you're an organization that has, you know, events across the state, you m- might be able, or region, 
you might be able to track some of those supporters that you know want to support you at another event and go experience it and maybe a little more intimate setting than what your larger events have grown to. Yeah, so you need to attract well, people if, outside the community, I guess, too. Yeah. Well, you know, yep. if you live in the city, a 15, 20-minute drive feels like an eternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you live in the country... Driving two yeah, hours to go to about. dinner yeah, is yeah, you don't yeah. even think about it. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. you just it's just what you do. Yeah. And I and right. I you know, I grew up in a very small town, you know, all of us did. Trevor Trevor was kind of a mix of both. But I remember growing up, it was an hour to go to dinner. Yeah. If you wanted to go out, it was an hour drive. And that wasn't yeah. even into this, just to the edge. I I think you know, you got to think too about who your group is and who's going to show up. And I think that point you made about people will come, they want to have that experience, they'll do it all the time. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. And be in it for the long haul, right? That seems to be a trend lately when we're talking, you know, be in it for the long haul. You want to commit to it. You, you want to, if it's, you know, doesn't reach your expectations the first year, you know, build from that, I guess, position yourself to have a good successful first event and, you know, set a goal to grow the next year and, you know, think about the, the following year, what you want to grow to, but you got to commit to it. I thought you said something interesting as well, where you, but you were, it was very fundamental, right? In our eyes, and it became fundamental, you know, for you, you created your own set of fundamentals for all these events you were doing. But I think a, a couple of ways that you can prepare properly, you said, get the date out there early, mm-hmm. plan it early, get it, don't make it like, you know, an afterthought, or, you know, we're doing this 30 days out or whatnot, but get it on in on folks radar early and often sounds simple. Like once again, it's a fundamental, but if you're in a small town, I think it obviously, you know, bears fruit, right? No doubt. No doubt. I don't want to beat a dead horse on this, but we were just very strategic about following up with those business leaders in the community, businesses, mm-hmm. doctors, the people we wanted at our event. You know, we, we kind of, you know, plotted those folks out and then we had a plan, you know, devised a subcommittee in those communities of a hey, follow up with this person or this business you know, six months out from the event or further and get it on their calendar, Smart. follow up with them again, keep hitting them up until, you know, eventually they were coming. We had them by the table. We wanted to come and they were inviting their, their seven friends to join us that were, you know, high clientele for us, I guess, that we would have never attracted had we not, you know, worked really hard to get that business owner in the, in the event doors. So yeah, I can't overemphasize that importance enough is have a plan, especially to attract you know, the people you want there and that have the capacity to support and, and follow through with it. Don't yeah. just, you know, open up the invitations, you know, online and I guess hope isn't a strategy to totally. people that come to your event. So awesome. I, I, Love I have, I have just something to kind of button on the end of that. And this is, I kind of started feeling this little twitch come on because I know Trevor's heard it. I know Matt's heard it. We work with, you know, so many nonprofits and big ones. We work with a lot of really big ones, but we also work with a lot of small ones. And one of the things that just makes me start twitching, I'm, I want to break the duct tape out and start taping my head around my head so my head doesn't explode, <laughs> is whenever somebody goes, well, we're just a small little small nonprofit. We're really yeah. small. Well, we're just small. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe, if that's what you think about yourself and that's what, because it's not, ha, size has nothing to do with it. Eliminating the room. Mm-hmm. We've all worked with nonprofits that were very, you know, what we would call, consider small. To me, small is under a quarter million dollars a year in annual revenue but have a spectacular event where they raise $250,000, you know, they They raise a quarter million dollars. And, and I, I, but the thing is you've got to commit to your mission. If your mission Mm -hmm. is it, if it's meaningful, if your nonprofit is in existence, you're meaningful. If you're there and you're doing it, then commit to that mission, commit to what it is you're doing, the importance of it. And don't start thinking side guessing because I hear people say, well, you know, we're not selling we're, and I literally had somebody doing this during COVID. We're not, you know, we're not providing staples and basic needs. They're in the arts. And I said, but Mm -hmm. yeah, the, you know, food and shelter, those are the basic needs, foods, clothes, and shelter. I agree with that. We're not, ca- you know, cavemen still drew on the walls. Yeah, people need an outlet for being creative. <laughs> you, art yeah. art yeah. is what makes us human. It's what is, is that creativity part. And so mm-hmm. I think it's just as important. And so I, I guess I would just want to say, just, you know, not only commit yeah. to this event, but commit to what you're doing and do that within the community. Yeah, agreed. Hey, piggybacking on that, you attract that kind of, you know, if that's your belief system, that's what you're going to attract as well. So it totally if is. you're sitting yeah. around twiddling your thumbs going, oh my gosh, I wish we had some high net worth donors coming to an, our event. 
<laughs> but you put that out there in the world like, oh, we're really small. And, you know, um, once a week I do add a lump of uh, sugar to my coffee because I don't want to overextend. You know, that kind of thing. it's like, hey, mm -hmm. this isn't that place, man. You know what I mean? I mean, swing for the fences, you know, don't be yeah. don't be bashful. It's cliche. I still love it. The abundance mindset mindset, right? Totally. You got to have it. You got to have it. And then I, I was thinking about Chris, a buddy of ours, Chris Land, that was on our podcast. He's like, you know, I typically don't want to give to an organization like that because I just, well, you say this too, Jay. It's like, I want to be a part of a winner. Right. I want to be a part of a mission mm -hmm. that's swinging for the fences, cracking the ball way out there. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And people can well, feel that more than ever. And your point is, is, is really good. The abundance mentality. You know, there are some people that go, yeah, I, I that's what I do. I, this is where I, I want to believe because I love the arts. I love, you know, I'm using that for an example. Yes. I love it. It's a big part of my life. You know, I, I want to make sure that these kids have it because, you know, we're teaching, have the kids art camp. I don't know. I'm, I'm just ribbing here. There are going to be a lot of people in your community that feel the same way you do. You probably, sure. they probably, you probably already know them. Yeah. Don't underestimate their willingness to dig in their pocket deeper, especially when you're wanting to do something special, especially when you're wanting to take your, you know, you go to that, that donor and you say, Hey, we really want to take our event to the next level. We really want to do something this community can be proud of. We want to do yeah. something that's going to really attract other people like yourself. And we'd like to make sure you're on board and get that support. Yeah. And people with if, capacity, they don't think about helping five people. They think about helping 500 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, we don't want to help five kids. I want 500 kids going to that. Well, I think I've I, 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 I used yeah. this example before. There was a lady who was at this event, and I said, who's your biggest donor? Who's your biggest fan? I'm asking the executive director. She goes, that's Miss Johnson. I, to, who's here? Well, I went and talked to her. She goes, why? I said, because I'm going to ask her for some money. Eh, you know, I don't know. She's. I went and asked her. She wound up giving $6,000 that night. Mm -hmm. You know how much money she had given pri previous to that? Mm -hmm. Five. Five thousand, awesome. <laughs> because that's all they ask. Because that's all they ask yeah, her for. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. I did. Yeah, it's a limiting belief. We could talk for. An, we could literally talk for an hour and a half about that. Yeah, but that's true. I jotted down some notes. You're in a small community. It's okay. You can still build a big event and raise yeah. a lot of money. It's okay. You Heck know what yeah. I mean. You could be in a tiny little mountain town in Montana and raise a hundred thousand dollars, but buy in, play the long game, for be, sure. be strategic. Be creative and disciplined. I love it. I'm recapping a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I think that's great. And 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 you know we're we're hearing it from Matt because he's actually done it. <laughs> so we're we're so thankful that he's on. Well, our I mean, team you now. he's know, on our being, side. Being everybody, the, sorry. He was the number one fundraiser for a for a Rocky Mountain Elks Foundation large conservation for eight group. years, yeah. and so yeah. I mean he he really knows how to how to make it work up there. So yeah. and it it is work. Done it. You know it's hard, but it but it's there. So we are glad to have him on our team. He's a fundraising um, scientist, everybody, but he's ours. Sorry. <laughs> you can reach out to him at Matt at HA Fundraising. If you have any questions about building large events, small events, yeah, do us that yeah, do us you. that favor. You can, you know, submit any questions or anything like that at podcast at hafundraising.com. But as always, do us a favor, share this with someone in your network. I know you know someone. We know you know someone that's operating an organization in a small town or a big town. It's all applicable. Share it with someone in your network. Do us that favor. Rate, review, download, subscribe anywhere you're consuming your podcast. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, really, really guys. Good. Trevor, good. Appreciate you, both. Hey, Matt. Yeah, Rock appreciate you taking time to do this. Thanks for Thank sharing, you all bro. for so much for listening. We appreciate yeah, it. It was a good one. Right on. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you love our podcast, click the download button, rate us, and follow us on social media at HGA Fundraising. Get out there, start fundraising, and raise more money. See you next time.